Hello everyone, Mipa here, trying to make your Monday a little better and maybe even something to look forward to. We are here with a video that is a little different than normal. Now, I made a short. It's an animatic that I made. It it took me a few days, but I did it and I'm I'm really excited about it. Now, if you don't want any spoilers about what it is, it's about like 35 seconds long if I remember. A link to it will be in the description if you want to look at it without any spoilers. So I'll give you a moment to go do that now if you wish. Otherwise, if you went to do that and came back, or if you're still here, this is how I made it. Essentially, it's kind of just me drawing and explaining some of the lore behind it, because that is all this is really, it's lore. I made this story, and I'm kind of making this story with Gerbil Fantastic. Link to her channel is also in the description. <sighs> Yosemite, the more human looking boy character, is her character that she made. Mine are the other two that are featured, the two girls. And this whole concept was made by a random generator that I have actually used on this channel. The main thing about it was that it said to give our two characters the power to kill anything they touch. And we were like, welp, okay then, random generator. And it was supposed to just be a random fun design thing. And somehow it spiraled into this. <laughs> But we both really love this story, and we talk about it all the time. And I heard this song, and I could not resist connecting them. So, here we are. In this drawing you see here, you will see Yosemite. This is him. This is the character that Gerbil Fantastic made. So, at the start, I put the lyrics on there, <laughs> but towards the end of it, kind of gave up <laughs> because I felt like the lyrics were pretty clear, although for this, it just gave it some movement, which I appreciated. So essentially, what this part of it represents is that with the curse that they got, it gave them what the random generator gave us. Whatever they touch will die. It, it is unfortunate. And Yosemite does not, does not enjoy it. <laughs> he used to be like a gardener and he hated even seeing meat in stores. <laughs> so this was very unfortunate for him, quite honestly. But you know, sometimes fate happens and you get cursed because this world just has mythical creatures in it and there are demons although they are usually seen as an urban legend because they're very rare but if somebody had the unfortunate rare occasion of finding one and it gave him this curse which is very sad and it <laughs> really haunts him but here he is, he has to deal with it. So, <laughs> that makes it sound like so unempathetic of me when I say it that way. But that's how it is, alright? So, you can clearly see that in this, he's thinking about it, he's thinking about death because the curse kind of forces him to do that. The blue in his hair um, actually comes from when they kill, whether it's accidental or not. If they kill something, a little bit of blue is added to their hair. So, that's just a little thing, a little detail, because the random generator gave us that hair color, so. Same with the eye color, they got the eye color with the curse. I think, I think his eye color used to be hazel, if I remember right. And, you know, this, this is him. I don't really have much else to say about this particular frame. I just quick added the words, and... Yeah, we shall move on to the next little frame. Because this one didn't take long for me to draw, actually. 
So for this next drawing, I actually animated this part of the animatic. I'm not showing the animation process because that would kind of be inconvenient to record. And I am just using the recordings from Abyss Paint, but I did make the parts of the animation on Abyss Paint, so I have the drawing of it here. I essentially made the parts, pieced them together, moved them around in flip-a-clip, and I got the animated bit. Now, what this is, is Yosemite putting on gloves, because a convenient little way around their curse to kill everything they touch is that if there is fabric between them and whatever they touch, whatever they touch is safe. So him putting on gloves is a nice convenient little way to protect everything that he may want to come in contact with. So it makes working at his job easier. Now, another unfortunate thing about Yosemite's curse is that the demon did not stop at just cursing him. It also took away his twin brother, <laughs> which is very unfortunate. All of this <laughs> really is. That random generator, man, it just <laughs> sent off a bunch of stuff. The moment he could kill everything he touched, it was kind of hard to make it positive from there. So, you know, somebody wears this little locket thing that his twin brother had given him, and it was kind of a joke because it had his brother's face in it, but since they're twins, it looked a lot like him. So it was kind of supposed to be a joke where it made him seem like self-absorbed to wear it because it looked like it was an image of him. But it wasn't. And after his brother went missing, he actually started wearing it more in honor of his brother who went missing. As you can see here. Now, you know, somebody also has a job. Even through this curse, he managed to keep a good paying job so that he could keep his house. He works at a bar, he is a bartender. Now, <laughs> this bar does not have many workers. It has like three and it used to only have two. So this bar is open way longer than what one usually is, I feel like, if it doesn't really serve food. Because he had to- he would work like 12 hours a day, which is not healthy, but he didn't sleep or really take care of himself anyway because he felt really bad about the whole curse thing, so I guess he didn't mind. So for this frame, I had him leaving the bar after his shift because that transitions into the next thing that is mentioned. I also forgot to color his gloves, <laughs> so there they are. Now, here we are, after he left the bar. What happens after he left the bar this fine night, you may ask? Well, a new character emerges. A character that I made. I actually made, like, every character in this story other than Yosemite, because I feel like such a dungeon master in this, because I, like, control everything and just make Yosemite and Gerbil Fantastic have to figure out what to do. Even though I also have to figure out what to do because some of my characters are on the good side. Speaking of, that character is the one who approaches Yosemite on this night. This character's name is Naomi. She... <laughs> she found out about all these people that are just suspiciously going missing at the bar around Yosemite's shift and she comes to investigate. Quite honestly, she's kind of stalker-like in this moment, but we don't question it because Naomi ends up being really nice and she just wanted to figure out what was happening with the missing people. So, <laughs> Naomi follows him. It's quite stalker-like, but eventually she is able to talk to him and just actually figure everything out. <laughs> I don't know how she managed to get Yosemite to explain the curse thing, but you know, she did it somehow, so props to her, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, here she is, and she convinces him to let her 
come to his house. Honestly, I really don't know how she managed that if I'm being completely honest. But you know, here she is. So, they go to Yosemite's house. Now, most of the people that went missing during Yosemite's shift actually wasn't because of Yosemite. I'm going to explain that more in the next panel, but for this, for this little panel here that I'm showing, this is Yosemite at the house. He is very unsure about actually letting Naomi see what's in his house, but you know, here they are. It's too late to turn back now, Yosemite. You brought her here. <laughs> she now knows where you live. Good job. I actually had to animate a door opening for this panel, and it was infuriating to do the shading because I had to redo the shading like three times because I kept messing up because I haven't actually animated anything in a bit other than putting on the glove and it was just uh it was so bothersome and annoying but I did it eventually it was fine <laughs> and that's that I, I hated it so much, but I did it and it looks decent and it literally only lasts for a second So I don't really care because it lasts for a second No one's gonna pay too much attention to it unless someone like watches it a million times over just to like nitpick me animating a door opening into darkness But you know <laughs> We all have our things, you know So yeah, Naomi comes to Yosemite's house. That's really all I have to say for this part. Naomi is very persuasive, which I honestly didn't realize until I was talking about this right now. Props to Naomi, guys. <laughs> she ends up she ends up being really nice, so <laughs> I think we can all appreciate that. Naomi was made, honestly, solely for the purpose of giving Yosemite a friend. <laughs> that was why she was made. So maybe that's why she was so persuasive, because she's friendly. I don't know. But here they are. I don't know why it feels like Yosemite's just standing here for a while. I don't fully know how the Abyss Paint recording thing works. So I could probably just cut this little end bit out and move on to the next panel. So, did I mention that Yosemite has a niece? <laughs> yeah, I have been holding that off until this panel. Yosemite has a niece. She didn't speak when... when she first came to Yosemite. So, Yosemite didn't actually know his name and thought it would be funny to just start calling her Denise. So this little creature you see hiding in the shadows is Denise. You'll see her more in a second. This, my friends, is what came <laughs> of the random generator when I looked at it. <laughs> when I got that random generated thing, my mind went to spooky thing in the woods. <laughs> Gerbil, Gerbil Fantastic, she... <laughs> she got at least like a kind of normal looking human being and I got this This is Denise Denise came <laughs> when <laughs> When Yosemite's brother went missing This is Yosemite's brother's daughter and she did not go missing like her parents. <laughs> it's, I, I just, I can't look at Denise and say her name while being serious, but <laughs> they went missing and Denise showed up at Yosemite's doorstep to explain, in air quotes, what had happened? For some reason, she refused to talk. She has never spoken. I don't know why. Once the curse went further with her, because she, in her, like, childness, did not understand 
the concept of death and how bad it was so she kind of kept killing things more than yosemite was as an adult to resist the urges the curse gave him denise is a lot farther down in the curse she is pretty much dead and her body is basically just containing her soul at this point so she's a lot further down and a lot scarier and that's why she looks how <laughs> she does but you know here she is so once she got to this point i could understand why she never speaks because she barely has a mouth i know she's smiling in this but that's essentially just her face ripping open and then it just reseals itself because of the curse containing her in her body this is definitely the most spooky story i have ever made or been a part of but, you know, the random generator did its thing, and here we are. I still think it's really fun and exciting. And honestly, Denise is kind of cute once you get to know her. <laughs> she can actually be a wholesome little child sometimes, despite how she looks, believe it or not. So, it's kind of nice sometimes. I don't really have much to say about this part, other than that little pickaxe handle she has is just something that... Yosemite won from a bet at a bar and Denise decided to keep it. <laughs> it kind of just looks threatening and I thought it would be a nice little thing to fill this part of the animatic with. So, I don't know. Here it is. There's not much to say about this part either other than I thought it would be cool to have Denise jump at the camera. Now this part's kind of up for interpretation. She could be jumping at us. She could be jumping at Naomi. She could be jumping at Yosemite based on the next panel. Yeah, I just thought it'd be cool to have her jump at the camera and they would fill the space well. I think it turned out decent, at least. <laughs> Here's a close up of her. For this last part, I drew Yosemite holding Denise because Denise is actually pretty clingy of Yosemite. She actually cares a lot about him, believe it or not, which is kind of sweet. Like I said, she can be sweet sometimes in her little childlikeness. And Yosemite is looking at the camera or possibly at Naomi at first, but he ends up looking away because as much as he loves Denise, he is ashamed of his whole curse thing. So... You know, he doesn't like talking about it, so I thought having him look away at the end would kind of insinuate that. And that kind of wraps it up. Here's Denise and her weird... Her, her weird self. This is just how she is, but... You know, I think we can all accept the fact she looks weird. We can all agree on that. I also just realized I kind of forgot to put his locket on for this part, but can we all just ignore that, please? Thank you. And that, my friends, is all I have for this video. If you haven't already, look in the description to see the short of all of these little things put together. And here is your context. I it got a little faster at the end because by then I kind of explained everything and I was kind of just explaining the images themselves. So if you watched it the first time for the lack of spoilers and were a bit confused and now watched this, I hope it makes at least a little bit more sense now. That is all I have and this video is already getting a little long I think, so I'm just gonna stop talking and wrap it up here. I hope you all have an amazing week everybody. Goodbye!